I've got another mega mailbag to do. I've actually got so much stuff I'm going to have to split into two mailbags because it's just too much. Now this is going to be an interesting little thing to look at and I think the box gives it away. So stick around, I think you'll like it. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon too before I forget to tell you. Now this item I've already opened up. I've cheated a little bit because I needed one of the items that are in here. So I'm going to show you anyway. There's a bunch of these things. We've got a bunch of these modules. These were fairly expensive. I got these from a company in India, believe it or not, called Sunrom. So this is a USB to keyboard interface. It's like the universal board they use for various things and they configure it as required. We've got a similar board for um, other modules as well, for like mouse and things like that. Basically, the shipping on these was as much as the modules. So, um, I don't know what the exact price is, but I think it cost me about $400 New Zealand all up in the end. Now I've purchased 10 modules, you can see there's only 9 here, because I've used one of them on the project. And that's actually why I purchased these things. You can actually get like a Chinese one as well, this thing here, I think I showed in a previous mailbag. This one uses SBI instead, so you can use these, but I haven't actually tried using this one yet. I ordered a bunch of different ones at the same time, but I knew this is SBI and it could be problematic for what I'm trying to do. So these ones here use Serial instead. UART output, which is far easier to use. So basically what you do is you plug a keyboard into the port there and you've got a power supply here, which is five volts. It outputs three volts from the serial. So there's a three volt output, HYC here outputs three volts. You have to make sure you use it on something which is three volt tolerant or at the very least use a level shifter or something like that on the output. Now it's got four wires on there, but I only actually need to use three of them because you've got uh, VCC, ground and serial output. So TX out, that's all it has. And it's just really simple, it just outputs the keystrokes, right? So every button you push, it'll output within reason. It doesn't actually do every key. So some keys, like escape key, will give you a different value, for example. You have to watch out for that. The generic keys are fine, but things like function keys do different functions. They won't output like a key code for those. Escape key and a couple of other things as well. So yes, you have to watch out for that. Arrow keys is another one. I don't know what the actual proper ASCII values are for those or decimal values, whatever they are, for, for those particular keys. So I don't know, maybe it's something to do with these. Or it's fine, as long as you know to watch out for it, you know what values to look for and what to use in your code, it's fine. It works. So I've used one of these successfully and it's been really good. It tells you if it can work with a key or not. So it's got an error light on there. Most USB hosts have these limitations in some way or another. This one, it cannot work on a keyboard which has a USB USB hub built into it. So only a plain keyboard. If it's got a hub, it won't work. There will be links down below for these items as well. Well, most of the items. This is an interesting one. This has actually been opened by Hong Kong Customs. I've never seen this before. First time I've seen one of these. You can see it's been sliced and got this seal over it. Very interesting. I never had that happen. So this is from China, but it's gone to Hong Kong first. I'm not quite sure what the situation was there anyway. So obviously decided I needed to check them out. So it's just some more switches. The same as ones I've already got over here. Just different colours. I've got some more grey ones and um, hopefully they're exactly the same. And I've got some yellow ones as well. I just need these for my project for different functions um, because each button needs to be a different colour for this is simpler if I say I'll push the green button or push the yellow button when I'm trying to train someone it'd be a bit easier. I've got more of those coming too. But um, I did feature them previously in another mailbag but I'll, I'll quickly cover it again I suppose. Now in here we have a single LED. These, these buttons can actually come with either no LED, a single LED or dual LED. So these housings allow for that. And we've got um, a, a pair of normally open, normally closed contacts. So one side is normally open, one side is normally closed, and the top two pins across there are common. They link together. So they're pretty basic little things. They're quite nice switches. They're quite responsive. I like them. So they use them well. Switches like this are used in a lot of older test gear as well. Very similar switches to this. And I just opened this, and it wasn't recording. I m must have pushed the button. And it didn't go. Anyway. Got some more antennas. These are LoRa antennas for ANC to 8 megahertz. I've already got some of these previously, sitting just here. So um, I've got so many modules that I need to work on and have working in this system, this project I'm working on. I just need a whole bunch of antennas. I'm probably going to have to get some more as well as some more modules actually. They seem to be okay. Thanks to my Patreon supporters as well. I really appreciate you because you're helping to buy things like this and helping to make content for everyone else. It's very helpful for everyone. Everyone benefits. Not just me. So what do we have here? Crammed in there, right? They look like displays. Here we go. So yes, it's a, a mixture of I squared C and SBI. I'm not quite sure which one it is. All right, so there's the pinouts. So it's 1.8 inch display. Yeah, it's a TFT apparently. I really don't remember what these are. I might have to look these up. It says TFT, so it might be a bit more advanced than a standard one. So I think it's probably SPI interface. 
and it's a TFT, RGB TFT display, 1.8 inch. I'll have to play around with that and see what the story is. I honestly don't remember, I've been buying so much stuff recently. It's just a blur, it really is just a blur. So how many of these have we got? Six of those. Yeah, I don't know. Check the links out below, it'll tell you more about them. Follow the links. Right, we have a package from DHL, which is from PCBWay. So this is a sponsored item from them. I'll be doing more videos on this. It's obviously just mailbag, but I'm doing some videos showing the PCBs in more detail, as well as the projects I actually got to make. I'm not quite sure which order you'll see them in. This might be the first thing you see. It might be the last thing you see. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I've got some more of these. <laughs> they sent me some of these recently in a little Christmas pack. I did a video on it. So I've got some more of them for next year. Nice. Little stars, flashy lights on them. Piece of your way pen, always handy. And three different circuit boards. Oh, and I've got some stickers too. I've already got some of those somewhere. So these three boards are different parts of the project. So this part here is the keypad, and that's what these buttons are supposed to be for. So they're supposed to mount on the keypad, like so. Um, obviously, an array of them. And then this part here is the rest of the controller, which actually interfaces to this. So these actually plug in together, you can see you've got the, here's the header right here and here, and one ball goes that way, and they connect together. At least, I hope they do. That's the plan. They better connect together. <laughs> we'll see if I've got it right. So these got an ESP32 on there, a lower module, power supply. It's got a header here for the FTDI. All right, so that's the power supply module goes in there. FTDI adapter. So if I need to program the lower module, I can just plug it in. All right, let me to plug it in circuit. I've got a header here. I could have used switches, but I decided to use headers with jumper pins. So what I'll do is take the pins off and stick it onto the next pins over. It allows me to put into programming mode to program the lower module if I need to change any configuration of it. it also allows me to isolate the serial connection from the ESP32. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. I've been rushing so much trying to get all this project done. I'm hoping I've got it right and I haven't messed anything up because it's entirely possible that I have. I hope I haven't, but it could be something that's happened. So that's that part. The final part here is a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway. So this accepts a ESP32, which is upside down. Let's go this way up. But this ESP32 goes over here. So ESP32 goes on the side of the board. And you've got some sockets here for LoRa modules. So lower modules go on the side. And again, I've got the FTDI adapters here and jumper blocks to allow me programming. So it can support two lower modules. So it's got two independent channels. Of course, you can program on the fly to change channels if you really want to, but I haven't done that. I've also got these headers on here as well. So if I need to jump into any pins and expand them or do anything else later on, I've got the option of plugging onto those pins. And also you've got an OLED display here, which is a small little OLED. And that will just sit on this side of the board. So the board's going to be this way up inside the case. And so when you look at the bottom of the board, this mounted on the box, obviously, um, you can access sort of all the independent parts apart from the display. So yeah, that's part of the project. I've been working on this thing for a month, as well as making like a Raspberry Pi web server and that sort of stuff for the first time having played with Raspberry Pi. So I had lots of stuff going on. Massive project, lots of work. Glad I'm finally getting towards the end of it. Uh. And the final item of this mailbag is this big box. Now this is a review item from Banggood. There are links for this down below as well. I'm just gonna have a quick look at it right now to see what we've actually got in the box here and show you that. I will be doing a proper video on this later on. Proper in-depth review once I've had to play around with it and actually figured it out and that sort of stuff. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to make sure that you get the chance to see that video. In the meantime, this is a little bit of a teaser. What we've got, we have a quite large box, which has got power cord, some clips, these clips will give you a bit of a hint about what's in here. Four wire clips and have a user manual. Now this is a uh, benchtop LCR meter, but they call it a digital bridge. We we'll have a look at this soon. Let's get the thing out of the box. Here you go. It's an uh, ET4401 LCR. Let me just get the manual and have a look and see what it's supposed to do. So you've got the 4401, 4502, 4410. I'm not quite sure what the differences are actually. So this is the 4401. Don't forget there'll be a link down below for this for Banggood. Differences are the frequency ranges. So this can do 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz. The 4402 can do 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and the 4410 can do 100 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And I think that's the only difference. Hmm, I'm surprised we've got different models for that actually. Anyway, must be a reason for it. So there's the specs, and there's a bit of a teaser of what's on the back of it. So we've got handler, IS232, USB, RC power, switchable voltages. Watch out for the review on this thing. Make sure you subscribe to check that out later on. So there'll be links down below for this. Do you want to check them out as well? That's from Banggood, as I said, one of the stickers. It's entirely possible the review video will come out before this mailbag video because I've got so many mailbag videos queued up already. Um, 
despite doing these mega mailbag videos, which obviously get through a lot more items at once, I've still got a lot there. I think I'm still about three weeks ahead right now, something like that. So you probably see the review before this mailbag video. If you haven't, look at my recent videos and you'll see the review there for it. I'll probably chuck a link down below as well when I do it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you later and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.